Hello, we thank you for attending today's webinar, Solutions for Implementing SD Express into Your Products. Before we begin, there are a few items everyone should know. The presentation is being recorded and will be available for viewing on the SDA website after the webinar concludes. Everyone registered today will receive an email with the email, with, I'm sorry, with the website address where you can find both the webinar and the presentation slides. To maintain the highest audio quality, all attendees are on mute. We will be taking questions online using the chat function in your GoToWebinar control panel. We will answer as many questions as we can at the end of the presentations. If you'd like to submit a question, please use your GoToWebinar control panel and use the question feature to post your question. And now, here's our first speaker, Yossi Pinto. Hello, everybody. Moment. Okay, so I'm Yossi Pinto, I'm the chairman of the SD Association and also the chair of the technical committee. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank you for joining our this uh, public webinar and welcome our guests. We have a few uh, guests which are which are all actually com uh, SDA members as well. And uh, this is these are guests from uh, uh, various companies that uh, provide uh, various uh, solutions, uh, how to implement your uh, own SD Express host. So uh, let's go to the, yeah. Now, yeah, before uh, we go to the, we start, we have some legal uh, disclaimer here. Basically, uh, it says uh, that we have these uh, uh, companies that will present even though they are uh, SDA members, it's really everything which is said is under the responsibility of the companies, and SDA is not taking any responsibility on that. And we have, we may have some, might have a few forward-looking statements, so uh, we are not also responsible on those that will indeed happen. Uh, agenda for this webinar. Uh, so I will provide uh, some introduction on SD Express in general. And, uh, and then we will follow with the SD Express bridging solutions uh, with the following SDA member companies. We have the Bay Hub, Toshi Akagi, and we have, uh, hi, uh, we have uh, from Genesis Logic, Sean Chan. Hi, Sean. And we have from J Micron, we have Gordon Chang. Hi, Gordon. And from Realtek, we have Jim Shu. Hi, Jim. And then we'll go to uh, SD Express and Micro SD Express Connector Solutions by Amphenol, Robin Au. Hi, Robin. And we have SD Express Testing Solutions by Prodigy Technologies by Godfrey Coelho. Hi, Godfrey. And then uh, at the end, uh, we will have a Q&A session, short Q&A session. Um, so basically, as I said, the, the idea is that we would like to introduce here a, a few very easy solutions that uh, you just need to have either USB or a PCI interface, and you may very easily uh, actually implement uh, SD Express uh, support. So, yeah, just a moment. Yeah, I'll. I'll uh turn the video uh, for a moment yeah so uh, sd association has uh, created uh, uh, specifications for sd memory cards for more than 20 years uh, focusing and on maintaining the relevance and value for consumer and industrial uh, users as of today we have around 80 800 members uh, covering all aspects of removable card ecosystem, cards, connectors, memory devices, and host vendors. FT Association provides technical, marketing, and compliance capabilities uh, to the members and make it all work together uh, to meet uh, the industry needs. Oops. Yeah. Okay, 
so uh, I guess that most of you already heard about SD Express card specification. Uh, for those who might be less familiar, SD Express and Micro SD Express cards are the latest generation of SD standard that includes PCIe and VME interface in addition to the legacy UHS-1 interface, allowing actually backward compatibility. As you can see from the graphs at the bottom, SD7 supporting up to one gigabyte per second with the single lane PCIe Gen 3. And then we have the SD8 that was introduced later that support up to four gigabyte uh, with PCIe Gen 4 by 2. Both cards use the same form factor uh, sizes. Just a brief uh, look at what uh, SD specification uh, evolution, what happened. SD Association was formed in January 2000, about 23 years ago. Uh, this standard was started at the time when there were a few other type of cards and form factors in the market. And uh, driven by a group of market leaders who joined the organization and dedicated their efforts and great vision, this specification got adopted fast and became the de facto removable memory card standard used by uh, uh, all consumer market. In 2005, the SDA uh, released microSD form factor. In fact, we may proudly say that these two small form factors probably have contributed a lot to the digital consumer revolution happened in the turn of this century. Uh, the microSD was followed then by a few more major new versions as shown, ultra high speed versions and the biggest jump to SD Express started in 2018-19 and then uh, the 2020. SD standard is continuously evolving, driven by the SDA members, uh, following the market needs and technology evolutions, including the recently SD 9.0 release that you can see in 2022, that includes the boot, TCG, and RPMB that were added to the SD interface. And uh, last, the best proof of success for this standard is the fact that billions, billions of SD and micro SD cards were sold by today and millions of products support it. Uh, over the last two, three decades, uh, we can see a, a continuing market evolution of the memory technologies along with uh, product market needs. Uh, a megasphere in which one side fits the other and vice versa, a circle that contributes to a continuous ongoing evolution. Uh, SD Express is the answer of SD Association for this need. The PCIe high speed interface and the advanced NVMe protocol were added to SD, opening new horizons for the SD card usage. Um, we see a never-ending growing need for memory capacity and performance. And let's look at a few existing and potential SD applications. Uh, what we see here is a multi-channel video capturing, which requires multi-stream high-speed recording and captures large amount of data. And then we have gaming with 3D high-resolution graphics, requires uh, more memory and high-speed capabilities for real-time usage. Uh, VR and AR video increasing uh, in quality, requires high speed, real time view of 360 degree. And then we have uh, semi embedded applications, potential IoT, mobile compute, etc. And a multi sensor data collection and or multimedia application running from cards. And uh, last but not least, we have 4K cameras are everywhere and we are growing 8K, 12K and even 8K 300 degrees uh, cameras with huge data and speed requirements. Um, and uh, we also saw, uh, see recently, I think that, that will be discussed later, um, off-the-shelf bridge solutions allowing full support of SDUHS2 beside the SD Express, enabling smooth transitions uh, for, for those applications that use today the UHS2 applications. SD Express cards uh, may be utilized by, by opening new possibilities for most of the shown applications. 
In fact, the, the first applications that already started to adopt FD Express interface are not even shown here. I'm talking about mobile computing. Uh, we already see some mobile computing devices and card readers supporting SD Express cards. Those all are uh, most likely using one of the off-the-shelf bridge solutions that we will be uh, that will be described later uh, later on by by my colleagues here. Um, here are a few more characteristics of the SD Express card. SD Express card uh, identifies itself as standard NVMe device. So uh, in fact, SD Express card may be initialized directly from the PCIe NVMe interface using a standard PCIe and NVMe drivers. Um, ESD protection is the same as standard legacy SD card. Uh, the PCIe interface on the host side should support host plugin out. And uh, both TCG and RPMB were introduced with SD 9.0, as mentioned earlier and uh, may be supported by the SD interface as well. So those features, uh, TCG and RPMB, actually supported by NVMe already. And uh, currently, SDA is working on a new speed class over NVMe. This is something which is a stand ongoing standardization. Uh, if you uh, want to join this effort, please, and, and you are not an SDA member, uh, you, you are most than welcome. Um, something important relating, related actually to the implementation of host. Uh, if we look at the SD Express or micro SD Express card pinout, we can see the following. Uh, first row is the conventional SD pinout supporting SD signals in SD mode or PCIe mode uh, and, and, uh, or PCIe sideband signals in PCIe mode. So we have kind of a multiplexing. And the second row uh, is added to support a differential I.O. in PCIe mode as defined in SD7 uh, specifications. And we also, also have the third row is the second lane of a differential PCIe I.O. defined in SD8.0 specification. Um, of course, more performance requires more power. While in SD 7.0 with PCIe Gen 3, uh, we, uh, it was defined to stay within the SD legacy power envelope of up to 1.8 watt. Uh, going to PCIe Gen 3 by 2 or Gen 4 by and Gen 4 and Gen 4 by 2 uh, requires an addition of higher power state. Those are the power states uh, defined in NVMe mode, and then. Obviously, note that we are talking about peak uh, consumption. Uh, to reduce the power when not active, uh, PCIe low power substates can be used as well. They are supported. Both uh, PCIe and NVMe are supported by many, uh, many test vendors in the market. Uh, in order to allow usage of existing test equipment, and SD Express test fixtures were built for card and host, as you can see at the bottom right. Uh, SD7 uh, test fixtures are available for any interested party, and the SD8 also test fixtures uh, were already uh, released, and both SD8 and SD7 are available and can be uh, borrowed by members uh, from the SDA uh, uh, labs. Uh, or can be purchased uh, from the, the producer of those uh, uh, cards. Such cards may be uh, uh, borrowed, as I said. Um, okay. And uh, finally, NSD Express also dedicated testers are coming up, and uh, one of them will be introduced later this today. Uh, going to the how to implement SD Express host. Uh, this is something that we also had a, a, a public webinar on that in the past, and we have a, a introduced a, a guideline and video in YouTube describing this type of solution. This is an example of SD Express host implementation that was introduced, that was introduced by SD Association. Uh, it assumes that host vendors or chipset vendors will utilize existing resources of SD host 
and uh, and PCIe host, and uh, and, um, and and implement that uh, uh, on their chipset uh, by their own to support SD Express. Such design would still require some electrical design work in order to allow host vendors to adopt SD Express in faster manner. This uh, off-the-shelf solutions came up, and uh, this is actually this session that we are uh, presenting today. Um, there are a few vendors like Beha, Realtek, JMicron, and Genesis that will present after me that provide a full bridge solution from either PCIe or USB to SD Express card interfaces. Uh, last but not least, uh, some host vendors may want to use SD Express card inside uh, the equipment as a semi embedded device in which only SD Express cards are expected to be used and no risk for legacy SD card insertion. In such cases, the host may uh, simply connect the PCIe interface to the PCIe interface pins of the SD Express card socket. And uh, uh, note that host is also required to put uh, AC coupling capacitors on the SD line and SD on the transmit lines of the card close to the connector as defined in SD7 standard. And there is no need to change any PCIe NVMe drivers and the card will behave as a standard NVMe and memory device. As a summary, um, SD Express card uh, includes, as I said, PCIe NVMe interface in addition to the UHS-1 interface. The SD Express card introduces itself as NVMe standard memory device. Standard PCIe NVMe drivers may be used to access the PCIe interface. Uh, the high-speed PCIe interface pads are independent, while the sideband and reference clock are mixed with data lines of the SD interface. With this, I have completed the introduction part, and we will proceed uh, now to the actual uh, off-the-shelf solutions provided today in the market. Thank you. Thank you, Yossi. Our next presenter is Toshi Akagi from Bayhub. Toshi, please begin. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, let me turn off the video. So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Toshi Akagi. Uh, actually, my first name is Katsutoshi, but I usually use short name Toshi, so please call me Toshi. So I am a senior engineering manager of Behab Technology. Uh, I am also working as a chair of IO Working Group and host TG of SD Association. So today I will present the uh, SD Express host IC solution from Behab Technology. Next slide, please. So this slide is showing the, uh, uh, the uh, brief introduction uh, of Behab Technology. We, Behab Technology is IC company. Uh, we are the leading company on, of Bridge IC and SD host controller IC. We have a strong expertise in high-speed IO technology and bridging technology, including uh, SD, EMMC, PCI Express, and USB. Our office uh, is uh, located in worldwide to support customers in many different locations like US, Japan, China, Taiwan, etc. We are co-working with uh, many companies in SD ecosystem, like SD card vendors, controller, IC, IP vendors, connector vendors and testing houses. In addition, uh, we are working very closely with platform companies like uh, Intel, AMD, Google. Uh, and also we are supporting many SD host product company. Uh, they make PC, high-end camera, uh, game machines using our host controller IC. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, this slide shows uh, several examples of SD host devices. As seen in this slide, uh, there are so many SD host devices like uh, smartphone, PC, mobile, laptop, platforms, uh, and camera. All those products have the demand for larger and faster removable media. So SD Express has the best position to support such demand. And now 
the SD Express ecosystem is ready. We have a SD Express host IC, uh, SD Express card, and uh, you know supporting connector and testing solution. So in that ecosystem, uh, we they have technology offers the SD Express host controller IC for all of the, these applications. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this slide shows the uh, trend of worldwide IP traffic. Uh, as seen in this slide, the data traffic uh, amount is increasing rapidly. And for that reason, the larger and faster local storage is also required or, or, you know, for or more, or many devices, more and more. Uh, next slide, please. And as I explained in previous slide, the demand for faster and larger storage is increasing. And it is very true, especially for the high-end camera application. So this slide explains that point. In decent high-end camera application, there are so many intelligent features like a continuous shooting, low data saving, et cetera. In addition, the image sensor technology's innovation uh, increases the pixel count drastically. So from those reasons, high-end camera application uh, needs larger capacity and faster uh, local storage, uh, much more than before. And we believe that SD Express is the best fit for such demand. Uh, next slide, please. So this slide introduces uh, the latest Bayhub's SD host controller IC. Uh, we have uh, BH770GG7, which is the bridge IC from PCE to SD interface. As a host interface, we support PCIe Gen 3 speed. As a SD interface, uh, we support all of SD generations, which are uh, SD Express, UHS-1, and UHS-2. Uh, with this IC, uh, we are targeting uh, high-end camera applications like uh, uh, DSLR or uh, mirrorless. So as seen in this figure, uh, our bridge IC, BH770GG7, will be connected to system SOC's PCI Express port. Uh, and uh, on the other side, uh, it will be connected to SD slot. So we believe uh, this IC can provide the smooth transition for high-end camera application uh, from current legacy SD technology to uh, new SD Express technology with keeping a backward compatibility. So for more detailed information uh, about this product, uh, please contact to Bayhub Technologies. I, I believe our contact information will be shared in data slide. So uh, that's all my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Toshi. Our next presenter is Sean Chen from Genesis Logic. Sean? Hi, thank you, Kevin. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sean from Genesis Logic. Uh, I'm the product marketing and in charge of the Corridor product line. Uh, thank you very much for your time to join the seminar. And today, uh, I will introduce uh, our new SD Express Corridor controller. The product name is the GL9767. Okay. Firstly, uh, this is the overview uh, of our new reader. First, uh, the major applications uh, are the internal SD Express card reader of laptop, maybe PC, server system, professional camera, game console, and the drone device. Those devices that demand the high speed of storage or the second SSD like storage for the real memory expansion. Second, the SD Express interface that I767 support can be up to PCI Gen 4 by 2. The third, 9767 is the first SD Express card reader controller which can backward support SD 4.0 UHS 2 speed mode. 
The existing device support UHS 2 car slot, using 767 in the next generation product, not only upgrade the speed of this SD storage, also retain the fully support of UHS 2 car. For power saving, the reader support a PCI Express SPM L1 substate, runtime D3 hard and the code. The modern standby for Windows system and the suspend to idle for Linux based system. So uh, 9767 support always include a Windows, Chrome OS, and a Linux based system. Uh, the reader is available in QFN32 5 mm by 5 mm package. Nine seven six seven is the first and the, the only SD reader controller passed the test for SD Express and the UHS two verification program blocks. Okay, okay, this is the block diagram. Uh, the block in the middle is nine seven six seven. The right side is the PCI root compress. The left side is the SD card. The reader connect to PCI U compass through the single PCI LED and the support UHS-1, UHS-2, SD Express interface by sure pin design. The internal high speed max is used to switch between the SD PCI mode and the SD mode according to the SD card capability. Okay. The red block uh, in the below can be seen as a SD4 car reader to handle everything for SD high speed car, UHS 1, and UHS 2 car. Okay, when the SD Express car inserted, the car will directly connect to PCI root compress and the inbox MVI, MVI driver will be loaded. So, in this use case, the PCI root port need to enable PCI hard plug function to support SD Express car plug and unplug. When the non SD Express car inserted, the car will be initialized by the internal SD4 host controller and the vendor driver will be loaded. In this use case, 9767 works exactly the same as SD4 car reader. This is the benchmark test uh, using the 9767 evaluation ball. Uh, the reader perfectly support UHS-1, UHS-2, and the SD Express with the expected speed in single SD slot. Nine seven six seven can support two LAN SDA card by a specific system design. The diagram shows how the reader support two PCI lens for SDA. The PCI root port has two LAN. The LAN 0 goes into the reader controller and the LAN 1 directly connect to the SD connector through the PCB routing. When the SDA card is inserted, the car will be able to operate at dual LAN mode if it supports dual LANs. Okay. This is the benchmark test used the 9767 dual LAN evaluation board with SDA connector and the plus the PCI Dream 4 SSD. The performance is same as the test that directly connect the SSD to the PCI slot. 9767 can support the current SD7 card and the future SDA card. 9767, uh, the schedule for the mass production, the current, uh, currently the engine sample is available now. The customer sample will be available in March, and uh, the, this part will be released to mass production in May. The design key is available now for customer to have an early evaluation. Okay, uh, this is my presentation for our new SDA, SD Express Car Reader Controller, GL9767. Thanks for your time and the lesson. Thank you, Sean. Okay, our next Thank presenter you. is Gordon Chang from J Micron. Gordon, please begin. So our our um, GMS five eighty one SD it's a SOC solution which is embedded with USB three point two 
Gen 2 to SD 7.1, 8.0 interfaces. Uh, so it's upstream, it's the USB 10 gig, um, and downstream supports the UHS-1 and SD 8.0 memory cards. It also supports the latest SD Ultra Capacity cards specification, which enables uh, the max capacity of 128 terabytes. And plus it is also backwards compatible with the legacy SD card specification. So this car has been mass production since July uh, 2020. So our GMS 581 SD, the product spec, uh, it's, it complies with uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1 and Gen 2. And it also complies with USB mass storage class, uh, bulk only transport specification. And it also complies with USB, USP specification. And it also has integrated USB type C multiplexer and configuration channel logic. And on the right side, it shows our GMS 581 SD block diagram for your reference. So the main product application uh, for our 581 SD, it's a uh, SD card reader, SD Express card reader. So this performance um, can support up to 985 megabyte per second. And that's a good compatibility with uh, um, legacy SD cards. And the capacity can support to up to 128 terabytes was using the SDUC cards. And this page shows um, our performance with uh, different kind of uh, cards, SD, SD Express cards. So on the left side, it's a uh, 128 gig uh, card. And the performance for read can go up to 820. And the right is about 660 megabytes. And on the right side, for a larger capacity of 480 gig, uh, the performance is better uh, for read and write up to 820 read and 740 write. And the performance will vary between uh, different brands of cards and capacities. And we'll have a, another product called 581 LT, GMS 581 LT, which is an upgraded version of our standard GMS 581 SD. So the upstream port stays the same at USB 3.2 Gen, Gen 2 by 1. And, but the downstream has three downstreams. So the first one is a PCIe Gen 3 by 2 and SATA port, SATA 6 gig, and also support for SD Express, SD 7.1 and 8.0. And it supports a variety of uh, cards and different of uh, solid state drives. So SD Express cards, CSP Express, CF cards, PCIe MEME SSDs, SATA SSDs, and SATA HDDs. So this is also in already mass production since uh, July 2020. And this page shows uh, our application for GMS 581 LT. So on the left, it's a all-in-one card reader, which is supports all the X Express, ZFS cards, ZF Express. And center is the docking solution. You can plug in all different kinds of drives, SSDs, and supports cards at the same time. And on the right side, it's a storage extension for for your NAS setup box or a router with a USB connection. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you and that's my, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, just, as a, just as a reminder, uh, if you have any questions, you can submit them to us uh, at any time using the GoToWebinar control panel. And I think you can use it on the questions section or the chat function. I'll take either one, okay? 
Our next speaker is Jim Shao. He is from Realtech. Jim. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for being here. I'm Jim from Realtek Semiconductor Corporation. Uh, about Realtek Corridor, Realtek is world leading fabulous IC design company that provides a variety of IC products. The Realtek Corridor product line focuses on high speed connectivity technology, such as SD Corridor, USB 3.2 hub, USB Type C PD product. Realtek SD card reader are widely adopted by ODN OEM. Realtek has tight partnership with SD card and the host chipset vendor. Realtek offer a wide choice of SD card reader for different segments in the usage. We can provide both PCIe and the USB interface for different usage. UHS1 to SD Express for different product segments. I list some popular Part number four reference. Today, I want to introduce Realtek SD Express solution, RTS5261 and the RTL9211DS. Implement your SD Express reader. First of all, select SD Express reader according your product type and the host interface. If your reader is built in host, we suggest to use PCI interface RTS5261, such as laptop, tablet, gaming console. If your reader is detachable device, we suggest to use USB interface RTL9211DS, such as docking station and a dongle. However, we have a special notice for PCI interface implement. Host chipset should support PCI hub plug, and the vendor driver need to install in host system. If your system can meet a board requirement, please use USB interface. RTS 5261 is PCIe SD Express Reader Controller. The picture on the right hand side is RTS 5261 demo board. Uh, the package is QFN32 4 part by 4. It's very tiny. The power source is 3.3 volt. 3.3 volt is very common in electrical device. It is a worse this is the world's first mass production PCIe SD Express Reader Controller. It is already widely adopted by laptop makers in gaming, creator, and the workstation laptops. You can buy those laptops in the market for at least two years. It integrates all power source for SD SP Express card, reduce the bone cost and the design effort. It can call layout with Realtek UHS1 solutions such as RTS5227S, RTS5228, RTS and the UHS2 solution RTS5250S. You can use one board design for different product segments. The design kit are available for SD7.1 Gen 3 1 LAN and or SD 8.0, Gen 3 2 LAN, Gen 4 1 LAN, Gen 4 2 LAN design. On the right hand side, you can saw the, the performance. The performance, if you use the SD Express card, the performance can reach almost 800, 800 in read and uh, uh, 700 megabyte in write. RTS 9211DS is USB 3.2 Gen 2 SC Express Reader Controller. The reader on the right hand side is RTS 9211DS demo board. The package is QFN68. The power source is 5 volt. 5 volt is USB plus power.
Uh, it is the world's first mass production USB SD player controller. You can buy it in the market. It supports USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 G BPS. It is widely adopted by the Dango Maker. The design kits are available for SD 7.1 Gen 3 1 LAN or SD 8.0 Gen 3 2 LAN design. Some customer might ask some frequent ask question. Uh, first, could SD Express Reader support legacy SD card? Yes. Realtek SD Express solution will automatically detect card type and use the suitable highest SD speed for operation. Second question, could SD Express Reader support, like if you use a USB interface, could you support a USB 2.0 or USB 3.2 Gen 1? Or if you use a PCI interface, could the reader support PCI Gen 1 or Gen 2 interface, host interface? Yes, the USB and or PCI interface reader are just suitable mode automatically, but the SD Express card speed might be limited by the host interface. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoy my talk about the Realtek SD Express solution. Thank you, Jim. Okay, our next presenter will be Robin Oh, and he's from Amphenol. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to submit them using your GoToWebinar control panel. Robin? Thank you, Kevin. Good day to everyone. My name is Robin Ao, representing Amphenol Communication Solutions. Throughout my entire career, I've always been involved in field application and design within the consumer and IT data comm industry. I'm also a member of Mechanical TG, actively contributing to the interconnect design of SD Express. New technology trends signal a demand for memory cards with higher speed, improved protocols and performances. The interconnect solution will serve as a communication bridge between the host and the memory card, must evolve alongside as well. Amphenol has been actively participating in SAE SD Association Mechanical Workgroup since the inception of SD Express. As seen in this slide, we have a vast array of SD Express interconnect solutions to provide multi specification releases. In fact, our micro SD Express connector is future proof, capable of meeting up to PCIe 4.0 SI performance. Besides offering a wide range of products supporting SD Express across all specification releases, we also offer customization, provides full SI simulation packages, and EMI solutions. As mentioned earlier, our micro SD Express connector, besides being PCIe 4.0 future proof, it is also able to be backward compatible to UHS 2. I believe this is an industry first. To better understand the challenges in achieving connector backward compatibility, you must first understand the connector evolution with each succession of SD revision. It all started with the trusty legacy SD 3.0, a single lane micro SD memory card. Then SD 4.0, commonly known as UHS 2, came along. Using FVDS technology, it offers a significant speed boost to up to 312 megabytes with an additional high-speed lane. UHS 2 connector that is readily available in the market is backward compatible to SD 3.0. A paradigm shift occurs at SD 7.0 when NVMe is introduced. If you look at the bottom right hand corner, you will notice that the second row high-speed lanes are offset. This presents a huge design challenge for the connector to maintain backward compatibility to micro UHS 2 memory cards. Based on our understanding, except for us and Fenor, there is no other micro SD Express connector in the market which offers backward compatibility to micro, to micro UHS 2 cards. Taking a step back to substantiate our claims, our standard off-the-shelf micro SD Express is able to meet PCIe Gen 3 and beyond, up to Gen 4 in fact. See the SI analysis results on the right. Simulations are done based on requirements of PCIe CAM 16 giga transfer per second. 
Rising to the challenge, Envono has developed a new micro SD Express connector option, which is backward compatible to both the legacy UHS-1 and UHS-2 cards. This is achieved by our patented dual contact high speed prong contacts in the second row. Speed is not compromised. It is able to meet PCIe Gen 3 and again with sufficient buffer to meet Gen 4. See the SI analysis results on the right. The simulation was done based on requirements of PCIe CAM 16 GB transfer per second. Again, I want to give a shout out that Enfernal might probably be the only interconnect manufacturer to offer a micro SD Express connector solutions with UHS-2 compatibility. Controller enabling UHS-2 backward compatibility is already available from Behub and other controller suppliers as well. Not forgetting full-size SD Express, Enfernal also has SD 7.0 connector solutions available to complete the product portfolio. Please feel free to contact us if you need any further information or samples. With that, it ends my presentation. Thank you everyone for attending this webinar. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Okay. Uh, our next presenter will be uh, Godfrey Coelho. And Godfrey, you'll uh, need to advance your slides because we're having some difficulties with uh, Belinda's uh, computer, okay? Okay, so uh, I need to control the slides, right? Yes, you may do so right now. Let me see if it is working here. Oh yeah, it's working, let me go back. Okay. So thank you everyone for attending this uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Godfrey. I'm from uh, Prodigy Technovation. And uh, Prodigy Technovation uh, has been providing uh, SD card test solutions for the uh, last few years, since 2015. We have UHS-1 and uh, UHS-2 protocol analyzers. And we also provide uh, uh, interposers uh, to test UHS-1 and UHS-2. Uh, today, in a few slides, I will be talking about how we can, what solutions we have for uh, uh, XD Express uh, card testing. So if you look at, uh, we, we saw in last few presentations, right? Most of the cards uh, are, uh, cards are backward compatible. They do support UHS-1, UHS-2, and uh, SD Express. Now, when we insert uh, the SD Express card, which is compatible with the uh, uh, UHS-1, the first uh, the protocol activity takes place is uh, on the UHS-1, and it will try to send command 0, and there will be a response and then it will send the command 8 and then there will be one more response from the device and uh, you can see that if it is uh, the power levels and uh, and the one bit in the response is set to one uh, the host will identify the card which is uh, on the system is a sd express card and then it will switch to uh, sd express uh, data mode okay now, in order to test this, so you need to also look at uh, whether it is uh, uh, like you know, those bits are set properly at the UHS-1 uh, standard and then move to the UHS-2. Now, you can use Prodigy's UHS-1 uh, protocol analyzer, uh, which uh, has, comes with all these inter interposers. And you can see here, uh, the host will send command zero and then there will be a response and then it followed by it will send a command eight and then there will be a response from the device and you can observe that in the response the bit is set one uh, by by looking at this okay now we know that the card is supporting xt express okay so you can use uhs1 protocol analyzer uh, to look at these parameters and make sure that you know, the protocol activity is uh, properly working or not and this product also can be used your uh, regular UHS-1 card testing 
uh, from the lowest speed to all the way up to 200 megabits per second. So then what we have is the uh, ST Express protocol analyzer, which is a PCIe Gen 3, Gen 4 uh, protocol analyzer. It's a by four uh, system. So you can actually monitor the four lanes, but the ST 7.0 is a by one and ST. So it also supports by two. So productive technovision provides the interposer, which is a uh, regular SD card interposer where you can uh, place insert the SD interposer between the host and device, and then you can monitor the protocol activity by tapping the signal. So this will make sure that signal integrity is maintained and we can look at uh, all the line training activities and the LTS system and NVMe protocol decoding, all, all the protocol activity, we should be able to observe that. So what we see here is a software which is uh, running on the PC, on a Windows PC, the whatever data which is captured by the protocol analyzer uh, during the ST Express protocol activity will be, can be monitored on a, on a PCI analyze the software which runs in a Windows PC. So we can see the upstream and downstream protocol packets and we can look at the line training activity. Uh, we can look at the LTS system and we can also look at the substates within the LTS system with the timestamp information. So this gives you a comprehensive view of the protocol activity during the SD Express uh, operation. So we have a uh, search acquire and you know filter all those kind of capabilities and you can look at the uh, uh, tlp and dllp packet con content inside that uh, whatever takes place so this is a software which runs on runs in a windows uh, pc so that's a very uh, short presentation from me and uh, now over to the admin Thank you for attending this, uh, no, listening to me. Thank you, Godfrey. Okay, uh, so if you have any questions you'd like to submit to us, please feel free to do so. We know we're running out of uh, time. Uh, so um, if you have any questions, feel free to send them. I, I have a one, I have a few that have come in so far. You'll see, um, do you know when there will be SD Express cards in the market? Uh, well, um... There are a few uh, publications that uh, announcements, I think, I think in, in the past that, uh, but we still don't see in the market. Um, yeah, I mean, for, first of all, SDA is publishing the specifications and obviously it's up to the manufacturers. Uh, the issue, I guess, is that uh, even so it's using, uh, you know, existing blocks of SD and PCIe, it takes more time to adopt because it requires um, hardware changes on the host and, and card. Um, hopefully, having such bridges will help uh, adoption in host side. We already saw uh, a few host manufacturers, mainly laptops and readers, that, um, co mobile compute that uh, already announced having such uh, interfaces. And uh, I'm certainly hearing uh, that uh, uh, more card vendors will come soon with introductions and uh, uh, there are serious uh, studies by uh, chipset vendors, product vendors uh, of adoption of SD Express. So generally we, we are, it takes uh, uh, slowly but surely we are generally very optimistic about that to happen. I hope so. Great, thank you. Uh, Toshi, uh, is your product only for cameras? Uh, no, um, so it, it it can be used for any other uh, application like a PC or uh, you know game controller. So uh, any uh, application can use this IC. Okay, thank you, uh, Godfrey. Uh, is your can your service be used for any type of product, including cards and hosts? Uh, yes, you can use for um, like SD or PCIe. A host and device, SD Express. Uh, it supports uh, by one, by two, by four lanes. So it has a lot of flexibility built into it. Currently, we also support uh, SD Express interposer, 
it makes it very convenient to test the communication between the SD Express host and the SD Express car too. Okay. Uh, Sean, uh, what type of host devices can use your product? Uh, the, our product on SMS device 6, 7 is a PCIe Express controller. So the target applications are the internal SD reader for the laptop, mini PC, server system, camera, game console, and drone device, and so on. Great. Uh, Robin, are, are samples yep. for UHS-2 backward compatible with micro SD Express connectors available? Yep, engineering samples are available and feel free to reach out to us before they run out. Great. Uh, yep. Jim, uh, what are the benefits of layout with other Realtek card readers? Uh, because if some uh, ODN OEM, they like to use one uh, board design for different se uh, segment from entry level to mainstream or high end. Uh, they can use a cheaper CPU with the, our UHS One solution or and uh, they might use uh, uh, the higher end CPU with uh, our SD Express solution. And, but they can use one board, one board design, one PCB design. And then they can use the same design to but replace the chip to for different segment product. Okay. Uh, Gordon, is your, uh, is your product um, designed only for products with USB connectivity? Um, yes, for our GMS 5881 SD. Okay, very good. Okay, all right. Uh, well, uh, with that, we want to thank everybody for attending the webinar. Uh, we will post uh, both this video recording and the webinar slides on our on our website. Uh, you'll also receive an email with a link to download everything uh, once it's available. Uh, and if you hit, need more information about SD Express, it's available on our website uh, and you'll receive the links to this as well, but it's uh, all there. And then we have a variety of white papers and other uh, details that you can uh, get about SD Express at any time. Okay, now we have everybody's contact information. Uh, so if you need to reach out to Amphenol, you can do so. And this is all part of the uh, a slide that you can get. Uh, here's Bayhub contact information, Genesis Logic, JMicron, Prodigy Technovations, Realtek contact. And with that, we want to thank everybody for attending, and we wish you a great day.